A family with an inherited condition gathers its medical history to empower its youngest generation. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. We all know that things run in the family, that our genes pass inherited traits from one generation to the next. Sometimes a family can know that they have a genetic condition, but pinpointing the exact problem can involve a lot of medical detective work. One key to unlocking the mystery is the family's own health history. In the age of molecular medicine, what the family knows about itself is a powerful diagnostic tool At Virginia Commonwealth University's medical center, Kristen Stevens is bringing five-year-old Patty and three-year-old Amanda for a checkup with clinical geneticist, Dr. Joanne Bodertha. They've both needed to wear glasses since infancy, and Patty has a heart condition that was successfully treated with surgery. So, um, wanna just give me an update on what's happened um, since that time? Patty had her surgery. She had her ASD closed. Kristen, who happens to work in pediatric cardiology, was on top of the girl's health issues from the get-go. She knew that their condition was inherited and that it is probably a connective tissue disorder and thought perhaps it was Marfan syndrome. Typically, um, we would expect individuals with Marfan syndrome to either have a family history or a number of these clinical criteria. And for example, in the skeletal criteria, it might be that your arm span measuring with your arm straight, fingertip uh, to fingertip, is 5% greater than your height. We might expect pectus, meaning the breastbone is either in or out. We might expect that you have arachnodactyly, arachno-spider-like hands and feet, particularly long hands and feet. We might expect hypermobility, flat feet, um, hypermobility of the joints. So those are scol scoliosis, skeletal features. The eye features can include dislocated lenses um, and then some other findings in terms of the size and length of the eye. You can also see um, uh, findings in the heart, of course, the aortic enlargement. You can see stretch marks of the skin without really cause, not just because of weight gain. You can see in um, spinal MRIs an unusual sort of um, configuration or shape to how the structures that surround the spinal cord um, can be there. So we look at all those features, we have a clinical diagnosis scoring system, and you either meet criteria or do not. Dr. Bodertha worked with Kristen and her husband Joe to create a family tree of health. It's a graphic demonstration that Patty and Amanda do come from a family with a history of extreme nearsightedness or myopia, along with long limbs and aortic enlargement. Of course, the family members themselves already knew that. I am I'm one of eight. Six of us wear glasses, and that is mostly from my mother's side of the family. My father, um, he was originally diagnosed with Marfan syndrome, um, I'd say more than 20 years ago. But he had pectus, and so his primary doctor said most likely he had Marfan syndrome. He had surgery for his pectus. When we found out about Patty's heart problems and some connective tissue disorder, he got a DNA test for it, and he, they ruled that out. So he doesn't have Marfan syndrome, but he's got some kind of connective tissue disorder. He's had a brother who had, has had an aortic aneurysm, his, uh, he had a sister who's had a um, brain aneurysm, so there's you know, something going on with his family. It was about two years ago when we took my, my daughter Amanda to her first eye doctor appointment here in Richmond, and her eye doctor uh, looked at her eyes and said, oh, is there some kind of connective tissue disorder in your family? It might be Marfan's, and that's when a light bulb hit. So Joe's father had the connective tissue condition, but his mother seemed to be the one bringing myopia into the gene pool. While on Kristen's side, there was a heart defect, so Patty's heart problem could have come from either of her parents. Lines of inheritance can be complex, so the more family background a doctor has, the better their chances of an accurate diagnosis. We are a combination right. of genes, environment, and nurture. And so, yes, we inherit half of our genes from each parent, but there are lots of things going on in our diet, our environmental exposures, as well as all those other genes beyond the ones that we are looking at. So, for example, um, as you heard with the Stevens, um, mom has a heart 
a structural heart problem as well. So how much of the heart disease in the daughter is due to the mom side of the family versus the dad side. If, if we didn't know the family history, we might not be thinking as broadly about the contribution of genes from both sides of the family. Joe's father's DNA test has ruled out Marfan syndrome. And now Dr. Bodertha is looking at other conditions in the same spectrum of connective tissue disorders. We had throughout the process, because the girl's main issue has been around the eyes, been thoughtful about yet another uh, collagen condition called Stickler syndrome. Again, that doesn't fit as well for the rest of the family. We know there's something happening in the connective tissue in the family. We know some of the genes like Stickler's can have variability, but um, they are not a perfect fit. I probably now, among the connective tissue conditions, would say it's, say it's Stickler-like okay. if I had, you know, okay. assessing um, clinically. Okay. And as you can see here, I mean, the girls didn't have the severe small, um, you know, chin and palate such mm -hmm. that they didn't need intervention at birth. They have the mild um, hypermobility. But then when we get out to, again, at least these um, three genes, I'll mm -hmm. show you this table. So here is when we go out then to what's available, clinical testing. How about you? Have you grown? Yeah. The challenge with many genetic tests, of course, is they don't predict severity. People are looking at that, trying to define if there are specific changes in genes that might relate to, yes, this is really going to be worse for the eyes or worse for the heart or worse for the joints. Um, but we really don't have that very much. And so the gene test is still often a plus minus. It can be a negative test and you still have the condition. And so what we try to emphasize, as we've done with the girls and the rest of the family, is having preventive care in place around those organ systems. So the girls still do not have a definitive label for their condition. But they do know that they need to pay attention to their hearts. Six months after Patty's operation that fixed an inherited defect, she and her sister are having echocardiograms and they will probably continue with this sort of preventive monitoring throughout their lives. Doctors today are living and working with an array of tools and techniques at their disposal to make a family's genetic history play a meaningful role in its well-being. But it still all starts with talking, with family members sharing their health stories. I'm very much in favor of um, good family communication and ownership of that information by the family. The, the place to start is today. What are you making, Daddy? Just like um, we talk more openly about breast cancer and cancers today than we did 20 years ago, I think we're gradually understanding that our genes are not about fault or guilt or blame, um, and so it, it is a generational thing uh, and all. Um, people died often in past generations without medical care, or they died without wanting to worry other people about that. We're struggling a bit in this country because we're so focused on the patch job and the fix-up job, but family history is very much a part of a prevention model. I just think it, it's a good foundation to lay. Um, I think it also helps the practitioners narrow down also. The more information you can give them, it helps them narrow um, what avenues they need to follow up on for recommending testing and um, follow-up as well. Their mom and, and, and dad within that family are the pathfinders about this and they, I hope, for that next generation can take that next step to integrate this in their lives not as a value-laden, bad-good sort of thing, but just part of the reality that we all share.